Hello and welcome to Camp Xbox, where we talk about all things Xbox, from the original to the Series X. Today, we are swinging into action with a review of Spider-Man for the original Xbox, based on the 2002 Sam Raimi film of the same name. This game dropped a little ahead of the movie's release, hitting the shelves on April 16th, 2002 across all major consoles, including the Xbox, which all footage was captured off of today. Published by Activision and crafted by Treyarch, who took the web slinger's reins after Neversoft's run with the PS1 Spider-Man titles. And this game was recommended by Marie Vijang. Thank you very much for this recommendation. And I actually owned this game as a kid, and surprisingly, I did not enjoy it back then. But its sequel? Now that was a different story. I loved Spider-Man to the game. But now I'm revisiting it years later, eager to reassess my Spider-Man gaming experience. After all, it's based on a seriously fun movie with an outstanding cast, and it should have the potential to be a solid gaming adventure. It combines the action-packed beat-em-up gameplay with Spidey's signature web-swinging, integrated into various levels. Back in the day, movie tie-in games didn't always have the best reputation, but the Spider-Man franchise has a track record of delivering some fantastic games. So let's dive right in and explore what this game has to offer. And as we go along, if you have any Spider-Man game memories of your own, don't hesitate to drop them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Spider-Man The Game follows the movie relatively well. It uses the same plot of Peter Parker getting bitten by a radioactive spider, finding his uncle's killer, and unveiling the secret plot and identity of Norman Osborn, also known as the Green Goblin. It has a solid basis and is well told through in-game cutscenes. If you've seen the movie, you know what to expect primarily, but it's not quite enough to fill the game's length. To address this, the team at Treyarch beefed up the game by adding additional villains to the plot. In this game, you fight the Vulture, the Shocker, and only on the Game Boy Advance and Xbox, you get to fight Kraven. I appreciate these additions because they beef up the game, it adds some fun boss battles, and it feels like a comic book storyline where Peter has to go up against multiple foes on his way to facing the main enemy. The dialogue is often silly, and I don't think anything is going to wow you about the plot, but it works and it provides a solid narrative drive. It captures the charm of the movie it's based on, including having Tobey Maguire and Willem Dafoe reprising their roles, and I enjoyed their delivery. Tobey's delivery in particular reflects the very essence of Spider-Man, with much of his dialogue being very tongue-in-cheek. Bruce Campbell also shows up as the narrator for the tutorial and bonus game modes, which is an incredible touch. The game retains a movie-like feeling while incorporating additional elements to prevent it from feeling like a direct rehash, and I think it comes off as enjoyably well done. Spider-Man The Game takes a somewhat different approach compared to many future Spider-Man games that would offer an open-world New York for you to explore. Instead, it divides its plot into distinct levels. These segments include web-swinging, indoor brawler levels, and boss battles. Each of them has its merits and drawbacks, creating a mixed experience. Starting with the positives, the web-swinging sections in this game are really good. Swinging through the city is straightforward. You simply hold down the right trigger and off you go. It feels fantastic, especially during missions that involve chasing adversaries through skyscrapers. The in-game meter system guiding your next destination's direction and height is a bit complex, but it surprisingly works well as this game's waypoint system. Air combat is another strong suit. A simple press of the white button locks you on the enemies, allowing you to shoot webs and execute aerial kicks seamlessly. The boss battles against the Vulture and the Green Goblin, which take place in the air, are some of the game's best moments. However, the game's quality takes a hit when transitioning into indoor brawler levels. Here, Spider-Man handles like characters in common action games of the time. He has combos that you can learn from pickups within the level. While basic punches and kicks are possible with standard button presses, 
combos are far more effective. The combo system itself is decent, although it can be challenging to maintain combos consistently. However, the real problem lies in Spider-Man's tendency to stick to walls. While it's expected that he can cling the walls and climb all around, it often occurs too easily in the middle of fights and it just feels disruptive. Especially when combos seem to regularly not want to hit and you have to be quite precise. It's not my favorite fighting system. Adding to the frustration, the camera in these levels is problematic. The camera doesn't automatically follow your character, you need to control it manually. Unfortunately, the camera's movement is clunky and it just never feels intuitive. Throughout fights, I found myself constantly battling with the camera, which it becomes manageable with time, but still remains a noticeable issue. Despite these shortcomings, some indoor levels stand out, especially the Game Boy and Xbox exclusive Craven levels. These introduce variety by requiring you to dodge traps and sniper fire from Craven, which is all from Craven's perspective. I thought the sniping bits were awesome. The boss fight itself is really enjoyable, with the room crumbling around you and you end up getting corralled into traps. Where the game truly shines is in its environment. Locations like Central Station offer open spaces, reducing the annoyance of collisions, and it provides room for satisfying combat. Additionally, the game packs in plenty of extra content. By completing the game, you earn points from each level that you go through. It unlocks cheats that all lead to exciting rewards like unique costumes and different game modes. There's even a chance to step in the shoes of Green Goblin, which is really fun. Quirky additions like Spider-Man Bowling injects a playful silliness that compensates for some of the game's weaknesses. Spider-Man also offers a challenge with tough fights that will test your health management, especially in later stealth focus levels. Unfortunately, these lengthy levels lack checkpoints, meaning you will have to restart from the beginning whenever you die. It's a bit punishing and could have benefited from a checkpoint system, but it does provide a demanding experience for those who enjoy a nice challenge. In terms of gameplay, it's a mixed bag. While some elements shine, others fall short. It takes some time to get accustomed to some of the mechanics like the camera, and although I didn't dislike the gameplay, it lacked polish. With some refinement, it could have been an all-around outstanding experience. In terms of visuals, especially considering it's a very early release on the Xbox, Spider-Man holds up quite well. The character modeling, particularly Spider-Man himself in his suit, is a highlight. He truly stands out against the foreground and appears sharp and well-defined. I think the colors on Spider-Man really pop and the variety of his fighting move animations is a nice touch. The same level of quality extends to the bosses, who are impressive recreations of their comic book counterparts. I especially love the rendition of the Vulture, which looks exactly like the comics with his bright green suit. As for the representation of Spider-Man's home of New York, it's worth noting that this game doesn't offer an open world experience like some later titles. However, it does provide engaging outdoor sightlines. The towering skyscrapers and the tiny cars below create a visually appealing urban landscape, especially when exploring the city at nighttime. On the flip side, indoor settings can feel somewhat uninspired. Early levels set in warehouses feature dark corridors and expansive but empty building interiors, lacking in a certain degree of originality. That being said, the game does manage to shine in some later indoor moments, such as when you're exploring Central Station or navigating a trap-laden zoo. Overall, Spider-Man presents a solid visual experience, although it doesn't reach the level of being outstanding. It fulfills its role, and Spider-Man himself looks well animated and really good. The music in this game truly feels cinematic, drawing inspiration from Danny Elfman's iconic film score. It's a solid soundtrack overall, but what stood out for me were the moments of tense and suspenseful music during the stealth missions. These segments really set the mood effectively. The sound design throughout the game is well executed, every punch and kick carries weight and impact, adding to the immersion. Swinging through the city has a satisfying auditory feedback that complements the gameplay. 
However, I must admit that the voice lines, especially from the enemies, left something to be desired. Many of them repeat somewhat silly lines like, Looks like the freak wants to play! It's quirky and can be entertaining to make fun of, but it does get slightly annoying after a while. As mentioned earlier though, having Tobey Maguire and Willem Dafoe reprising their roles is a standout addition. Tobey's delivery sometimes teeters on the edge of being too nonchalant, but oddly it adds to the charm and humor of the game. Overall, the voice acting adds a layer of enjoyment to the experience that helps elevate Spider-Man. As you can probably tell, my feelings about this game are quite mixed, and overall I'd rate it as average to slightly below average. While it boasts solid visuals and good sound design, it struggles in the gameplay department. From a bad camera to fighting mechanics that don't feel great to play, to me the most critical aspect of any game is how fun it is. And in that regard, this game falls short of being fun for a good portion of the gameplay. And I know that this game has a ton of fans, and if you're one of them, I'd love to hear your opinions in the comments below. Everybody has different perspectives, and I love to hear how everybody enjoys these games. Personally, I wouldn't strongly recommend giving this one a try unless you have some nostalgia for it. I'd suggest checking out other Spider-Man titles available on the original Xbox before diving into this one. On my Xbox ranking list, Spider-Man goes in at number 46. I did think it was more fun than the Incredible Hulk game, but I would be more willing to replay Project Snowblind before Spider-Man. And that wraps it up for today. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe if you'd love to see more retro Xbox content. Let me know what you want me to play next, and I'll see you here next time at Camp Xbox.